Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the second module of uh, system software and compiler design. So in the second module we mainly had the lexical analyzer and some introduction to those um, analyzing techniques and uh, algorithms. So these are the type of the questions which you could expect in the exam. Like this is the most important one, the different phases of compiler and uh, like they could give you this equation as well you have to find out and input buffering is also repeated a lot of times so these are the two important questions and uh, another one top main important topic this is the last topic of this module this is a transition diagram there are some transition diagrams which you need to practice and remember so that you can draw an exam if they ask you uh, means for the specific one okay and what else is uh, important um, yeah that's all uh, that's all these are three questions which are important from this uh, module okay the different phases of compiler the input buffering and the last one is the transition diagram see the different transition diagrams they have asked multiple times right so that is an important one okay so that's all what you have to focus in this uh, module and this is one of the numericals it's asked just one time so uh, we'll see it later uh, or in some uh, any other video but in this video we'll be just uh, discussing the theoretical concepts okay so let's get started these are the topics so the module is divided into two parts the first part is the introduction to the compiler and here the important one is the structure of compiler in here only that faces and all is there so you need to know what are, what is the structure and what are the compiler construction tools so that comes under this topic the important one and the next one is the role of lexical analyzer and uh, the input buffering as well as the recognition of tokens here only that um, face uh, what i mean is the transition diagram this comes here okay so i guess this in the structure of compiler that doesn't come the role of lexical analyzer and input buffering the the faces and the construction tools are present uh, in this part i guess okay so this is just the introduction part and most of the questions are asked from the lexical analyzer okay we'll be discussing this in more depth and this in brief uh, overview okay so let's get started what is the um, compiler a compiler is that which can read a program in one language and convert the source program into target language program okay just one thing you need to remember that as what is the source language suppose that uh, there is a computer and you have started to code okay you'll be coding in c plus plus or java and, uh, and all right that uh, that are the high level languages if you uh, give it to the compiler what does it uh, do is it will turn this um, language into target program target program is that which we study in module one header record and all right to load that into the memory it uh, converts this so the conversion is done by compiler okay that's all one thing you need to remember compiler converts the source language program into uh, target language program if they ask for the definition you have to add this one okay next is the interpreter interpreter is just uh, one by one line translator okay so it does not produce the target program it just does the operation at the same time itself and directly executes the operations okay by using the input supplied by the user okay so that's the main difference between compiler and interpreter and how is the structure of compiler it is in uh, divided into two parts analysis part and the synthesis part analysis part is the intermediate representation which is the front end and the synthesis is the representation at the target program as a target program means when you see uh, see a picture at that time uh, the what does the picture represent like for example there is a scenery of mountain here that mountain is nothing but analysis okay means um, what do you see at the front end that is the analysis part and what goes behind it means how uh, means who made it and uh, what was the intention behind making this picture that is known as synthesis okay that's the main difference and the compiler is also uh, means having these two uh, views the analysis view and the synthesis view so suppose that i write int a is equal to 10 okay if i write int a is equal to 10 what does analysis do is what i can understand from it i can understand that this is the uh, keyword and this is the identifier this is the operator then this is the constant so analysis part breaks the program into constituent pieces and imposes a grammatical structure on them okay it uh, makes it into tokens then what does the uh, synthesis uh, do is it will use these tokens to create a um, intermediate program like a target program okay so that is what the uh, part of analysis it breaks down the uh, program into tokens and using those tokens the target program is made okay the, uh, so those are the two functions of analysis and synthesis so as discussed the compiler has uh, two operations analysis and synthesis so the phases of the compiler are also the same there are total seven phases which you need to remember so it's very easy how you need to remember is the analysis part has three things analyzer analyzer and analyzer here and the next one is that uh, means uh, synthesis in synthesis what you do target program generation right target program so to generate target program you need to have code generator and the code optimizers so half part is here and half part is here okay so we'll be discussing each what does each of these uh, means faces mean and what does happening in each of these faces you need to remember it like a story okay it starts from here and, and, and at this point so let's see what happens in each phase 
in your childhood age you might have uh, remembered that you would have got a jigsaw puzzle like this and you, your task was to like uh, take these pieces join it together and form a meaningful picture right in the same way what does the first phase of compiler is the lexical analysis or scanning it reads the stream of characters making up the source program so whatever the input comes it takes all the input like uh, the pieces of jigsaw puzzle and what is uh, what it does is it forms it into a meaningful sequence called lexemes so if i got i then i got n i got t then i'll join this to form int okay that is known as lexeme that's the first phase okay and it's not just the picture which is stored but uh, it's the two things are there which is a token name and attribute value we'll be discussing what is token name and attribute value in the upcoming topics after you get the token so next step is to form the syntax tree why does syntax tree is used it's used for the parsing okay for example i have got one plus one is equal to two what i will do is i'll start from equal to i'll write equal to as like this then i'll write here one uh, sorry i'll write here plus and uh, i'll write here one and i'll write here one okay so what does it happen is like uh, this will happen first the uh, leaf nodes are the operators uh, sorry operands and this is the operators the root nodes and all which are in the middle those are the uh, operands okay always it will be in that form only and uh, that uh, formation is done by the uh, second phase syntax analyzer so if only the syntax is correct it will be forming in the same uh, way right uh, for example if i have written like instead of one plus one i read uh, i wrote one one plus okay so what will happen one will come here and plus and one will come here one and plus will come here so what happened the in the leaf node the operator came this is not allowed okay so that's what uh, it will check for the syntax if the passing trees uh, means follow this syntax it will be in the correct order yeah, in this case it is not in the correct order the, uh, the correct order is all the numbers and the letters should be in the leaf nodes and the operators should be in the root nodes okay in semantic analyzer this is the third phase the logic is checked if it means that it's performing any meaningful operation like for example instead of uh, writing int a is equal to 10 what i wrote is 10 is equal to int a okay so this does uh, the syntax is correct but the, it does not uh, make any sense right because 10 should be assigned to a and not int a should be assigned to 10 so that's what uh, it is checked in the third phase after that uh, so uh, token analysis next step is the uh, target program generation so for that first intermediate code is generated and after that the machine independent uh, code optimization there are some tools which optimize the code further and the code generation takes the input uh, intermediate uh, representation as the source program and converts it into target language okay so that's on what are the seven phases to uh, give a brief overview of what's happening we'll get a program here that program is broken down uh, uh, broken down into smaller pieces and those pieces are represented in the form of a tree and after that is done the semantic analysis is checked if it's consistent or not then uh, this is the intermediate program that is passed to the optimizers and the tools which uh, generate the target program okay so that's all what you have to remember and explain in your own words to carry out this in a more better way we will be using some construction tools like parser generator scanner generator and syntax directed uh, engine we'll be learning what all uh, these uh, things like in you know, one or two lines okay so let's see what are these uh, uh, tools do so mainly there are how many tools like six tools are there so let's see what are the each tools um, means operation parser generator automatically produces the syntax analysis from a grammatical description of a programming language what does it produce syntax analyzer from a grammatical description okay parser generator will produce a syntax analyzer from a grammatical description this is the second phase right from a grammatical description means tokens will be there and what is produces syntax fine the second tool which we'll be using is the uh, conversion of regular expression what is a regular expression like for example if i write a star how many uh, things can be formed a a or a like that okay so a regular expression is given and from that the lexical analyzer is uh, produced okay in the scanner generator the third one is the syntax directed translation it produces a collection of routines for uh, walking or parser tree just it produces a uh, way to pass uh, from the tree okay and code generator generates the uh, code from a collection of rules and data flow analysis shows how the data is flows uh, flowed in the uh, means during each phase uh, it uh, just analyzes that thing and optimizes if it's possible and the last one is the compiler construction toolkits they provide a further more routines and phases for better optimization okay so you can briefly go through it and write in your own words okay also you could ask you like the applications of compiler technology so what are the applications implementation of high level programming languages high level programming languages are c plus plus and java so what does it do is compiler will convert these languages into the target program we need not learn how to write the target program but we need to know how to design the compiler so that it converts these languages into the um, target program so that's the first application of compiler compiler does this operation 
second one is the uh, optimization for computer architecture means defining a more better way of computer ar ar architecture and the third one is the design of new computers like in risk and CISC. okay and after that we have the program translations like uh, program is consisting of many things like the numbers part and the op logical part and the database storing part and the sharing part like in the network and all so all those things the translation is done for the compiler so that it converts uh, those things and uh, does the following operation in the uh, machine level language okay and last one is the software productivity tools so it does the type checking bound checking and the memory management tools okay so that was about the first half of the module but uh, the mo not much questions are asked from that part so the main topic starts from here and most of the questions are asked from this topic okay which is the lexical analysis so as you can see from this diagram what is getting input is the source program okay source program is nothing but what a program we write in computer that is getting input into the lexical analyzer and from there the it is getting divided into tokens okay so whatever program i write it will be divided into these parts and all these are known as tokens those tokens are provided to the parser it checks for the uh, semantic means the logic is there or not okay then after doing for the first token it will come back and take the second token when this all is done it will be like the lexical analysis done so that's all what's happening source program will come it will be divided into tokens that will be sent to parser it will check for the logic again it will go for uh, checking the next token until all the tokens are over okay and at each time the symbol table is maintained for if uh, example new token is generated it should be stored in symbol table so that the reference is made where it is pointing to and what is the address and all so that's what's happening in the uh, interaction between lexer and parser so here you can go through some of the tasks of the lexer like identification of the lexemes and stripping out the comments if the comments are not needed removing the white spaces if in between two words there are many white spaces just one is sufficient so removing the extra white spaces correlating error messages keeping track of line numbers and if the source program uses macro program the expansion is also done in the uh, scanning part so these are the task of the lexer so it consists of two process the scanning part and the lexical analysis scanning means just the removing of the comments and the white spaces that does not require any tokenization okay to remove the white spaces we need not have any tokens isn't it so uh, that's what is happening in the first phase second phase is lexical analysis it's for the more complex portion where the scanner produces sequence of tokens as output wherever token is there lexical analysis is needed okay so three things which will be mostly used in this module is the tokens patterns and lexemes so, so what is a token token is a pair consisting of token name and an attribute value okay the example will be shown in the upcoming uh, part so that's a token and the pattern is nothing but a uh, regular expression and lexeme is nothing but sequence of characters okay for example the token name is keyword and pattern is this like the regular expression and what answer you get that is the lexeme okay so here are some tokens and the sample lexemes f is a token characters are i and f so it will be f else is another character e l s e so it will be else here okay this is the lexeme and these are the tokens okay like that many are there in case they ask you about the lexical errors in exam what you are supposed to write is uh, whenever an error happens in a syntax like for example here's an example i have just written like int a comma okay so this is wrong error right so uh, instead of um, telling to the user that it's a wrong error and the user is entering the correct one what does it do is it will automate it means what is the correct uh, thing that should come here either it should be int a or it should be int a comma b so either the uh, compiler will put this one or this one okay that is known as the recovery so there are some uh, methods like delete one character insert one missing character replace a character transpose the two adjacent characters okay like for example if instead of if i wrote f i at that time what it will do is it will just uh, convert into if and uh, if and continue okay so that is how the recovery options work and the next one is the input buffering in input buffering why we use uh, the buffers what are buffers buffers are cache okay for example if i uh, search in google something like uh, image of building okay at that time the images will be shown uh, to me and the images will also be stored in cache okay so what is the uh, cache do is whenever i enter and the time the building uh, search at that time what will happen it will not fit from the main memory it will fit from the cache itself okay so that's the faster uh, way of uh, retrieving things so that's what's happening in uh, buffering as well the speed of the uh, speed of the reading of the source program the buffer stores the recently used words for example if i store here like word world it is of five bytes right but i have just a space of four bytes so what's happening is world will be stored but uh, the d will be coming back to the first position because w o r l the uh, thing is over so again come back and store the uh, means the oldest word which was present okay so d will be coming here i will get the wrong output 
so that is known as the single uh, buffer or one buffer technique the another optimized way is the two buffer technique so here we have two parts without uh, sentinel and uh, with sentinel sentinel is nothing but eof end of file okay so let's see what uh, do these things mean okay so here whatever the uh, thing we do we'll be storing the characters here means whatever tokens value we get we'll be storing here and we'll be using two pointers which is the legacy in begin and forward so what happens is whenever we begin a legacy that will be pointed by legacy in begin and wherever it ends that will be uh, pointed by forward for example if it uh, encounters eof at that time it knows the end of the file the first token is over so what does it do is it will come back to the previous position because this is the last character so by using these two pointers we'll get to know how much words are present in the uh, buffer okay so there is a drawback in the first uh, technique which is the one buffer uh, sorry uh, with uh, without sentinels technique advancing the forward requires whether we reach the end of the uh, one uh, input buffer or not suppose that we did not include eof but there was just space there okay so it's a doubt like whether this space is uh, still uh, means the previous one was a legacy or is there any other operation forward also you have to check again come back again so instead of that we'll be using eof that is known as with sentinels okay so this is how the with sentinels works in more depth uh, that's what just I told you like legacy begin will be there forward will be there when it gets over it will come back to the uh, last position and it will surely know it should start from here and uh, end at this position okay so that's how the uh, two buffer technique works with uh, with sentinels okay so in exams they might ask you the algorithm as well because it's asked in the previous papers so if they ask you about the look ahead code with sentinel of um, two buffer technique what you have to write is just start from here switch star forward plus plus whatever is uh, pointed by forward that we will be fetching so in case that word is eof at that time what we have to do we'll be using two buffers right so it uh, what it will do if the forward is at the end of the buffer one reload buffer two and point the uh, forward to the buffer two what have what's happening is this is the uh, buffer one okay let's call it b1 and this is the new buffer b2 so forward will come here and there eof was there so what it will do it will just end this uh, buffer here and then it will come back and forward will be pointing to the starting part of new buffer the same thing happens here here as well else if it's the forward is end of buffer 2 if forward is here at that time it will come back and initialize this one and it will start from here okay so in that way the loss of information is not uh, happening much because we are using two buffers here okay else if both of these conditions don't work that means we are uh, reaching the end of the program so the last uh, code which you need to write is the case of else okay so this is what you have to write in the else part uh, means uh, the marks the end of the input it terminates the lexical analysis okay so this this is the three line code which you have to write in the exam means in case they ask you the algorithm as well okay but it has uh, means a lot of marks for it so next part is uh, we are just left with the uh, transition diagram so for transition diagram let's revise what all we have uh, learnt in the previous semester for automata okay so what is an alphabet it's a set of symbols like zero and one what is a string it is a means a group of characters and what is a language a group of strings like 0101 then again 110 like that okay a group of strings is called as language what is the prefix of a string suppose that we have the string banana what is the prefix of banana b a n also epsilon and what is the suffix suffix means at the end we are putting okay so here we have the suffix of banana as nana okay also uh, epsilon okay the epsilon is also considered as suffix as well as prefix substring is nothing but the middle part of it like uh, here we have banana here we have nan okay so that is the substring and proper prefix proper suffix and proper substring it should not in, uh, include epsilon that's uh, that's the only difference also it should not be the same uh, word for example in banana i cannot have a proper uh, prefix as banana itself okay same thing goes for suffix and substring as well after you have discussed the basics, let's discuss what are the uh, commonly used operations. That's the same thing which you have learned: union, concatenation, clean star, and positive closure. So, what is the union? If L is a, a string in S, and uh, so S is in L or S is in M. So there is a string here which is in either in L or M. If it is the union, so the combination of both is called as uh, the union of L and M. What is the concatenation? Concatenation means if I have cat here and dog here, the concatenation of cat and dog is cat dog. Okay and uh, clean closure is nothing but from uh, zero to infinity like how many times we want we can repeat for example a star is nothing but a, a, a how many times you can uh, want we can repeat okay positive closure is from i to infinity instead of zero to infinity okay so what is the regular definition for each of the letter which we encounter in the alphabet set that has a specific regular expression for it okay like each di has a new symbol 
and the iri is the regular expression for each of these symbols okay so that is a regular definition and the identifiers are the letters like uh, how is the letters represented a b till z how is the digits 0 till 9 id is letter and letter or digit we can have the id in that form okay and unsigned values in that we have from 0 to 9 and the digits uh, from digit digits star okay and optional fraction optional exponent numbers that also you can go through it we will be using this uh, less frequently as compared to this okay and you need to know about the algebraic loss for the regular expression so what are the loss commutative law means r or s is uh, same as s or r and associative law r or s or t r or s or t r s t or uh, r s and t like that we can uh, means change the orders and this will be valid expression so okay, same thing goes for these as well now comes the main part and this is the last topic of this module so what is there in this is the transition diagram so for regular operators the regular definition is uh, means uh, we can ask you see if i show you the question paper what the question might come is construct the transition diagram to recognize the tokens of relational operators if this question comes what all you are supposed to write that i'll be telling you now start from here relational operators the regular definition is uh, regular operate uh, means relational operator relop relational operator and these are the operators which you have to write which are used i mean uh, relational operator consists of all of these operators okay after you have written this one what are the different kinds of operations possible less than or equal to less than or not equal to equal to uh, greater than greater than or equal to these are the uh, means the possible combinations right so for each of these combination will be represented for example le how you will represent le means first you will go less than then equal than if it is just less than you will come here and it will go to uh, other that will return less than if it is less than and greater than that means not equal to so that you will represent in this um, means final state starting state here you will reach this intermediate state these are the final states so if it is greater than at that time you will come here you will not go to less than but you will go to um, see if it is equal you will just directly uh, return you will have an equal sign here but if you have greater than you will come here it will be greater than and the next question is greater than or equal to or just greater than okay so you'll choose that in that uh, means uh, respectively like if it's greater than or equal to will come here with equal to else you will go in this path okay so that's how you write the transition diagram this is all what you have to write okay so usually they ask two or three transition diagram in one question like in the previous one they are asked three things so let's see uh, what are the different things they could ask the transition diagram for okay if they ask you the code also it's very simple you are just taking a new token here and the state is zero initially because starting from the starting state and when the state is zero at that time you are checking if it's less than if it's greater than or equal to three things you are checking if it is less than the next question is less than or equal to less than or uh, not equal to or it is just less than okay so based on that you will be returning the states which it should go and if it is greater than the next question is greater than or greater than or equal to or not equal to right so based on that you will be specifying the cases here and you will be returning it okay so the codes are present in this uh, pdf you can go through it later but i am not explaining all of this because uh, it's very simple if you just go through it once you will understand okay so the next thing which you could ask is the identifier so for identify what are the different uh, means values letters a to z digit 0 to 9 and uh, id is letter then followed by letter or digit okay so i uh, will be uh, just representing the same thing here how is an identifier identifier is nothing but a variable name the rule is it cannot start from a uh, number it cannot uh, have special symbols it can start from underscore it can have the letters and digits here also it can uh, end with anything okay so it does not matter what it ends with but just the thing is it, it should not start with digit so if it is not supposed to start with uh, digit how it should start it should start from the letter only right so letter any letter it can start as well as in, it includes the underscore it can have under, underscore also in starting part and after that it can be letter or digit right so letter or digit whole star here after that other okay so the code for this also is same so i'm not going through it you can go through it later the next one is the um, unsigned numbers so for unsigned numbers there is just the uh, transition diagram so i have written a, a sample number here so let's discuss how this works what is unsigned number it's just a normal number with exponent values and all okay so uh, this is the uh, divided into two parts here this is the first part the normal numbers part this is the exponent part okay so here what you can see is the, uh, it's starting from the digits we can have n number of digits in the first part so start from here you can have the first digit compulsorily then you can have n number of digits so 41 is covered here and here okay so next what do we have next we have the it can just end at this part so it can just end uh, here itself like just 41 is also valid number right so it can just end at that point 
or it can have a dot here so i have represented a dot here and it can have another n number of digits so after the decimal also digits can be there and they can end after this point also it can end like uh, 41.38 is also a valid number so it can end else uh, we can uh, do it further like exponent value if i have to show at that time we will uh, go with e and after that plus or minus or direct any number this is also not required uh, means not compulsorily i can uh, ignore this as well so um, and after that also i can have n number of digits that represented by here okay and uh, that's how the uh, unsigned numbers is represented okay so all what you are supposed to do is just uh, make this transition diagram so write a sample number here you'll get to know uh, means with uh, including all the possibilities write a transition uh, number means the unsigned number and looking at that make the transition diagram okay draw this two to three times it will be removed in your mind okay the next one is the keywords very simple what are the keywords if then else at that time we'll start from here so if uh, then else is not uh, only the all the keywords but whatever keyword they show you uh, means tell you to do you have to do for that only okay so uh, considering if how is if represented start from here if it is i go to here the next letter is f and the other uh, word is there after that then the final state then t h e n else e l s e whatever they ask like int they ask write i n t that's it okay we are left with two things delimiters and white spaces so what is delimiters delimiters means new line slash n and what is the uh, white spaces tab or space slash t or space blank space so how do we uh, encounter this one so we can have a number of white spaces or tabs or new lines as well so we'll have one here for compulsory and after that we can have a number of that and we'll reach the final state okay so module 2 was very easy one and we are done with all topics and if you like this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one